Welcome to iLecture Online, and in this video we're going to look at the relationship between air pressure and altitude. Most people know that the air pressure decreases as you go further and further up, and as one of the results is as you go, let's say, go camp up in the mountains, and you try to cook your food, everything seems to take longer when you cook it because water will boil at a lower temperature because the pressure is lower there. So what we're going to do here is look and see how that pressure changes, and here's the equation that we use for that. Now, there's a lot of variables here, so P initial means the pressure at sea level, P will mean the pressure at some higher altitude, it's a function of altitude, and that's why I have it here. H stands for altitude then. L stands for the lapse rate. The lapse rate is the rate at which the temperature decreases with increasing height. So I have a little diagram here, this is supposed to be a city, here's a mountain, and so what's the pressure maybe at the top of the mountain at a height H? And we also realize that the temperature decreases as you go further and further up. So that has to be taken into account because if you look at the equation, PV equals nRT, we see that the pressure is also relative to the temperature. And so if the temperature decreases, then the pressure decreases as well. So that's why we have the one minus the lapse rate, the, the decrease in the temperature as you go higher and higher up. Uh, G is the acceleration due to gravity, because that's what causes the air pressure. It's the weight of the air pushing down, so G is important. M is the molar mass, R of course is our gas constant, and L is that lapse rate again. L in the denominator meaning it reduces the effect of the, of the exponent here. Uh, again, decreasing the pressure a little bit as you go higher up and the temperature drops. So, let's uh, put some numbers in there. Uh, what is the molar mass of the air? Well, the air is primarily uh, nitrogen and oxygen, and so the average mass of the air, since the mass, the molar mass of nitrogen is 28 grams per mole, and for oxygen it's about 32 grams per mole, so the average is about 28 and a half. Okay, so let's plug in some numbers, and let's assume that the height of the mountain is 1,000 meters. The lapse rate, by the way, is about 0.065 uh, degrees, uh, degree centigrade per meter, degree centigrade per meter, and let me check real quick on my notes here because I wanted to make sure I got that right. Do I have enough zeros in there? And it turns out I don't. I'm glad I checked. I actually have to have an extra zero in there. So it's 0 0.0065 degrees centigrade per meter, which means that if you go up a thousand meters, the expectation is that the temperature drops to about 6.5 degrees. Now, of course, that changes depending upon the conditions, but let's just go with that number. Um, the molar mass, M, would be about 28.5 grams per mole, and so that would be equal to 0 0.0285 kilograms per mole. That's the molar mass. Uh, L, we have the lapse rate. Remember what R is equal to. H would be 1,000. I think we're ready to go. Oh, one more thing. Temperature at sea level, mm, let's say it's uh, room temperature, so we'll start with T sub naught equal to 20 degrees centigrade, of course, we have to convert that to Kelvin, which would make it 293 Kelvin. Okay, now we're ready to use our equation. So the pressure at height equals to 1,000 meters, which is about 3,300 feet, is equal to the air pressure at sea level, so let's just call it one atmosphere, so we're going to compare it to what is at sea level, times one minus the lapse rate, 0 0.0065, that would be, uh, we can call it Kelvin per meter, uh, times the height, which is 1,000 meters, divided by the temperature, which would be at sea level, which is 293 Kelvin. Notice that the meters cancel out and the Kelvins cancel out, and then we have G, which is 9.8, and I ran, gave myself not enough room here, that's, that's my exponent, 9.8 meters per second squared times molar mass, which would be 0 0.0285 kilograms per mole, divided by R, which is 8.315, that would be joules per mole times Kelvin, and then L would be the lapse rate again, which is 0 0.0065 uh, Kelvin per meter. Now, all those units should be canceling out. Um, 
this is the this is the exponent because I ran out of room here we're talking about exponent this is not multiplied this is supposed to be exponent of this quantity right here all right so um, let's go ahead and figure out what's inside the parentheses here so I have 0 0.0065 uh, times 1000 uh, divided by 293 and that equals that so let me write that down so that's one atmosphere times 1 minus 0 0.02218 alright so you can see that's a little bit less than 1 raised to the exponent so that would be uh, x to the y like this so we have 9.8 times 0 0.0285 divided by 8.315 and divided by 0 0.0065. I believe that's correct. To, yeah, so raised to the 5.1677 as an exponent, and it equals, and so we have this is equal to one atmosphere times, I'm going to have to do that again because something isn't working out quite right. So let me work out the exponent separately here. So 9.8 uh, times 0 0.0285 divided by 8.315 divided by 0 0.0065 equals, yes, that's correct. So if I now take that, so we have 1 minus 0 0.02218 equals, and then raise that to the exponent, 5.1677 equals, ah, much better. This is 0 0.89. What that means, this is 89% of the original one atmosphere or 0 0.89 atmosphere, which means that once you reach a height of 1,000 meters above sea level, about 3,300 feet, your atmospheric pressure has dropped about 89% of what it is at sea level. And of course, if you want to see what that is at higher levels, you just keep plugging in bigger and bigger numbers in here and you can see the air pressure drop. So that's how you figure out the air pressure at any altitude in our atmosphere. Pretty interesting.